Hi, and welcome back to this video series on configuring PHP Storm with PHP Unit. My name is Sean Garsh, and in this video, we'll continue off where we left and look at configuring Git with our new and existing PHP Unit test driven development project that we created in PHP Storm. So let's get started. As you remember last time we left off with a passing test, we have our new our, our passing test to confirm that a user does indeed have a name. And we can be assured of that because we have our quality assurance and we are using test room development. But to move forward, we need to make sure that we can actually manage our changes. And thankfully for us, we will be using Git or and GitHub as well to push our project out to the out to the cloud and we can sync that way. But before I get into using version control, let's take a look at what's already in our project. As we can see, we have a git attributes file, and all that says is the the uh, properties of each file that they should have. Otherwise, you won't be able to commit. We have a readme. When readmes are great because they will show up in the, if they're in a root folder, they will show up in the GitHub repository. We also we also have a git ignore file, which says all the files that should be ignored. So that means we're pretty close to, to already finished. All we need to do is initialize the repository. And to do that, what we need to do is we can simply go and to our terminal and go git init. And now we've got an initialized Git repository. Now you won't be able to do this unless you have Git installed, the Git source code management tool. So if you don't have that installed, just go Git SCM and you'll find it right here. You can download it for your machine. And if you're lazy, then you can check out Chocolatey for Windows, which is right here. And there is a Git package over here. So you just go Git. It's one of the top ones. You can just install it with Chocolatey, which is like, which is just like apt-get install for Ubuntu or Linux, and it just works on Windows. Now, if you're on a Mac, there's something called Homebrew, and Homebrew is awesome too, and you can use Homebrew to install Git. So I'll leave that to you, uh, figure that out, and otherwise, if you're lazy, or if you're not lazy, you can check this out and go to the Git and install it. Now, you'll need to restart your computer if you're on Windows, rem remember that, and then you do this, and you create a Git repository. So we've created that Git repository, but now we need to start adding adding files. So the way you can do that is by going git add and then star. And now we've got our files added. And what we can do is we can go and head over to our preferences in PHP Storm to get that set up. So you go Control Alt S or Command Shit or Command Comma on a Mac. We can go up here and we can start to set this up. So we have this area right here called version control. You can see that we have an unregistered git root. So if you have this under your, if you created this folder in your git repository folder, probably call it GitHub folder or something like that, you probably set that up earlier. You'll need to do that. So the way we can fix this is we can click on the add root button. And once we do that, it'll add this as a root and go to apply. And now we see that there's some new buttons up here. These are commit and push or sorry, pull and push. So what we want to do now is start to, we can see these green files have been added, but they haven't been committed yet. So the way we can commit our initial commit is just simply go to commit changes. We can see a list of the files that are gonna be added. And one of the problems I already see is that the dot idea or configurations for IntelliJ are being added. We need to fix that before we can commit. So let's go back to our git ignore file. We can actually do it another way. Go into your git ignore file which is right here once again, we can add a folder which is .idea. And what that'll do is it'll ignore any file and of course we need to remove all those separate files that were added in .idea. Use the command line once again. Now, if you you could use a different tool if you want like source tree, totally go for that if you want to. So uh, git rm dash r being recursive and we want to remove all the folder, all the files in idea. And so I believe it just removed, oh, error the following, have changes staged. Uh, use cache to keep the file or I to force it. So you need to remove, force it to F. So we, we removed all those files. Now if we go back to the commit changes, we should see that idea is not, no, not, no longer being committed, which is precisely, oh no, it's not. It's still being committed. So we can just ignore that, not commit it, uncheck it. Different ways you can do this. And so like so, we got all our files here. We can go and commit and go to, oops, we need to create a message. So initial commit and we can go to commit and we have some change, some things you might want to look at. I'm just going to commit it anyway. And now we can see, uh, no, I don't. 
Then you can see that all these files are no longer green, which means yes, we are good to go. We are we do not need to worry about committing anything else. We have done this feature. Now, what I probably should have done is put a message saying user must have name, but I didn't. So that's that. Now you've created your first unit test, you've committed, and now you're ready to move on to creating some more unit tests and maybe adding some more tests for um, integration tests so you can actually check that the UI is exactly as you expect. So that'll be in the next video. Thanks for watching.